just like to say thank you for having me here today. Um, my name is Dumas Deaki, Crystal Good Writer, and I've been an educator in previous times. I was a teacher and a vice principal, school principal for a number of years, and I have since then uh, tried something different and went into the fashion design uh, diploma program in Vancouver, Alberta, or sorry, Vancouver, British Columbia. And one of my assignments was to create some uh, clothing lines that I thought were important. And so I came up with the real people's clothing using our traditional wear. Um, as part of my introduction, my parents are Judy Wings and Chris Goodrider, and my paternal grandparents are Madeline and Hector Goodrider and my maternal grandparents are Ruth Wings and Pat Cropyard Wolf. So today, um, I guess just looking at the dolls, um, I wanted to create something for teachers. I realized a lot of times as a teacher and administrator that teachers are trying to find free resources that are quality and a lot of times they're looking uh, to the internet uh, for resources and so that's where I came up with the so paper dolls. One of the things um, that are, I guess, looking at our real, real people's clothing, I, historically, before trade, we used to use the buffalo um, and other natural dyes in our clothing. And I really wanted to get an idea of what material we use uh, for our traditional clothing. And so we used a lot of um, hides, cotton, wool, um, and other various uh, materials to create our clothing. So today we'll be looking at the traditional Blackfoot outfits, uh, the Blackfoot war shirt, the women's traditional buckskin outfit, the men's traditional buckskin outfit, the men's capote, the women's cloth dress, the women's stand-up headdress and victory uh, headdress and as part of that also the women's ceremony dress and shawl and so those were traditional clothing that were made um, and you still see today uh, as part of Blackfoot uh, people and the clothing that we wear and a lot of it is uh, symbolic of different things and we'll have a brief explanation of those. So one of the things that we're going to look at today is uh, as part of the Blackfoot traditional outfits, we're going to be putting together the women's ceremony dress and shawl. 
And so what I did for this one is I used a cry cut cutter to uh, cut out um, a women's uh, body shape for the dress. And the Blackfoot word also was done with the cry cut cutter. Um, the wording at the top is also done with a cry cut cutter. So um, just if you're preparing this for students, it might be easier to have these ahead of time so that they can just work on the clothing um, as part of that. And this is the pattern for the women. And this was the pattern for the men that I used. So for the first one here, um, you'll need a glue gun for this one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, material and just um, cut out the, the pattern from that. So I've already traced it, just I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. And so on there, you would take the paper doll pattern uh, for the dress and just cut it out from here. And then it'll look like this at the end and that's what you'll use as your dress. So there's different material that you can use for the dress and I would encourage you to go to your scrap bucket or if you have a family member who sews, um, there's lots of scraps that you can use um, and just pull from your scrap collection um, different things that you can use for the project. So these are um, mostly for the shawls, the wool ones and I have three different ones that I can kind of pick from. And for the women's ceremony dress, you'll most likely use cotton. So basically just going to your scraps and pulling for the students um, to use those. If you're going to um, do other things, like you wanna replicate buckskin, but you can't purchase it, um, you can get these from the dollar store. Um, they're inexpensive and you can just use those. They'll work just as good as long as you let the students know that um, it is usually buckskin that they would use. So for this particular one here, um, I use the Scott uh, tape to just tape on uh, the dress. And so with that, um, that's basically where I would um, use this and just put it on to the shirt and the students can use like other types of glue um, it just kind of depends on what's available to you and what you can afford um, so that's kind of where you can just use that and just get a good chunk onto there and then you would basically size it up to where you think it would be And then you start dressing the doll. So I just basically took the pattern, uh, just using my thumbnail and added two ends to it. And so now I'm just going to add glue to it. And just to show you variation of glue that you can use, um, this is another glue that you could possibly find uh, pretty common in the classroom. And so that could be something where you can just um, do that with the students. So this one here, I might actually do it in two pieces. And that's where your tweezers might come in. And so a lot of the times, uh, the women in our community will cover their heads um, just as a sign of humbleness because you're usually in a place of prayer um, when you're wearing the scarf and so as part of our teachings is that we cover ourselves um, when we're at ceremonies so because we're really there for Atsimoyaskan. So the next piece I'm going to do is add on the shawl and I've already pre-cut the uh, shawl pieces and it just basically to fit here but before I put those on I'm going to put the fringes on. So I used uh, dollar store thread for this. I didn't pick wool because it's too thick and so basically what you would do um, is you would add the glue at the bottom of each one and you can use a glue gun for this uh, 
as well too. It might actually work better. And you just basically take the fringe and fix it up. And it might be a good idea to talk to the students about like what you're gonna be grading them on. So precision might be something, um, you know, just making sure that it looks good. Um, you know, Blackfoot people always took pride in like their work. So that might be something where you're going to, you know, give them marks on, on uh, you know, how good they are at making sure that it's neat. Um, and so just for them really putting the time into it. And you can eventually, like once it's on, kind of trim it. And then you're going to put these onto the doll. You will in the classroom need a place for the students to put their work so that um, it dries. Um, it'll be still wet at the end of class, so you wanna make sure that uh, they have a place to put it while it dries. So for here, probably after it's done drying, um, this is kind of like uh, as far as you can get right now, but I would just take uh, scissors and just trim those off once everything dries and you can put a safety pin. So in this one here, um, I had put the safety pin and so that would be your final, uh, I guess, uh, work that would need to be done is just adding the shawl. And then you can kind of just, uh, you know, give them the Blackfoot interpretation of the word. And so in this case, it's uh, the Blackfoot spelling here. And that's where you just kind of talk about the word a little bit um, so that they can kind of gain an understanding of, um, you know, some of the teachings. One of the other pieces that you can do if you have the material is you can start adding like finer details uh, to the project. And so this case, um, just because I have some leather string, I could even just add a, a leather belt onto the piece here and really just kind of, you know, give the significance of that. And that's where um, things like this um, that we have here, those are other adornments that usually would go on traditional clothing. So um, those are just other examples. Okay, so just a part of, uh, I guess, explanation is um, I just wanted to describe each outfit and kind of the material that is used. Uh, so when you're talking with students, um, they can kind of get an idea of what kind of material was used and the work that was put into it um, and the history. So this one here is the Blackfoot War Shirt and just the material that I used, I used wool. Um, I used some little clips that I got at Michael's um, to replicate, you know, just some of the work that you would see on some of our outfits. Um, the hair that I used on here, um, I got from the dollar store from the fake hair that the girls put um, on their ponytails. I just cut off a little bit. And this is actually real uh, buckskin. I got it from my mom's stash. So with the Blackfoot War shirt, um, for, I guess, social studies, um, Kainai studies, Begani studies, um, Sixaga studies, I guess whatever kind of um, assignment that you have for the students. Um, if it's for older students, you can even go more in depth and get them to put um, the pictographs um, that would be on war shirts or even do a little bit of quill work um, for the assignment. And that's kind of where they can just um, learn from it. Uh, so that would be some ideas with this. 
The next one here, uh, the women's traditional buckskin outfit. Um, it is real buckskin that I did use. Um, I got the beads from the dollar store and you'll need a tweezer for this because you had to do a lot of fine work. But I looked online uh, in my research and noticed that a lot of the um, dresses had beadwork in the style that you see here and had different type of animal furs on the dress. So I tried to replicate it as much as I could. Um, I know one of my aunt uh, Tsinaki Red Crow, one of her dresses is actually over in uh, London uh, in one of the museums. And really what happened before was a lot of our um, traditional wear was sold to different traders and collectors um, just so we can get food. And so that's kind of where, um, when I went over there, I seen one of her dresses. Um, and I know Glenbow has a lot of our uh, different dresses, but this is just really trying to get an understanding of the style of Blackfoot people. And that was a common design that you would find. So this one here, uh, the men's traditional buckskin uh, is something where there again, I used uh, just little dollar store beads. They're not actually real beads, it's like plastic. Um, but just trying to replicate some of the designs that you would find. Um, I used wool here just because I wanted it to kind of lift up a little bit rather than cotton. So uh, this is buckskin here that I used and the pattern. And up here I put a little bit of beadwork on there. And then the headdress was a little bit of a challenge. So I commend anyone who can do a better job than I do. Um, I was just trying to complete the assignment and try and be, you know, make it look good as well. But, um, you know, I, I seen other work since then and kind of gave me some inspiration that I could probably enhance that piece if I was to do it again. Uh, this is the traditional name and just a little bit of history of why I put the circles at the bottom. A lot of our TP designs have circles. And so that was something where I used that on all the designs and also used Morning Star as another design. So in Blackfoot traditional territory, we also have the women's stand-up headdress. Um, a lot of the dresses that I seen online were made of red wool. Um, I didn't see too many uh, black or uh, navy. Um, a lot of them were red, so, um, you know, I think that if you're looking at the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women Initiative, um, that could be something you could tie it into, um, and really just reconnecting our women to our traditional ways. The stand-up headdress is something that is um, common in this area, and the Blackfoot name, I can't bend this too much. Um, but that is, uh, there is a traditional society in our area that uh, wears the headdress. And so we're just trying to replicate that and also keep it simple um, enough that you can just get the general idea. These are pearls that I just got from some old beads that my mom had. So that's how I put that one together. Uh, the last one, this one was a little bit uh, tricky because it was so tiny. Um, but I was trying to replicate uh, this jacket here, the Hudson Bay jacket. And so for this one here, um, I looked at some designs online um, that I could find and used actually like scotch tape to just put this together. Uh, some, just some red material for the belt. Um, in some instances, they use the Métis sash to wrap their capote. Um, it, the blanket can come in six and four uh, lines. The six uh, line blanket is more for like chiefs. Uh, the four line blanket is more for the, you know, the general layman who wants to wear the capote. Um, but the six point blankets are hard to find and they're quite thick, but they would most often use those six point blankets for chiefs. And the four point blankets, uh, are, are quite common and you can still find those around today. Um, I just put some leather pieces on there and um, I guess just trying to replicate the capote uh, jacket 
and it probably goes back to when trade started happening with the Europeans. Um, once we lost our buffalo, um, we I think the buffalo were lost in 1879. That was the last buffalo hunt. And um, thereafter, we still needed to keep warm. And that's kind of how uh, the capote kind of came in was because we needed uh, it for warmth. And it was, um, you know, something that we uh, would trade. And um, so it's still around today. Um, the women's cloth dress, um, there's another variation of this, the women's cloth dress. This is the sample that I showed you today, but there's another version um, that is kind of the same dress that's used with the women's stand-up headdress, but it's uh, kind of like with the Tietjen trade cloth or the trade cloth. Um, a lot of women use that dress if they um, don't want to wear the traditional buckskin outfit. Um, they can go into competition in a powwow using that cloth dress. And so you'll see a lot of the cloth dresses um, using like elk teeth, um, different uh, material that is, uh, I guess, authentic to our area. And I think that's one thing you can mention to our students is we never had stuff from like really far away, like China or, um, you know, different places. A lot of our material came from Blackfoot traditional territory. And if it did come from another area, like dentelium shells, um, it was usually through trade. And the Old North Trail before European trade was something that um, they used uh, as a trade route and, and they would go and trade with other uh, First Nations around uh, Canada. And the dentelium shells come from the coast and that's where you can, it's just one more example of how uh, we used to trade um, even before Europeans came. So, you know, I think that's kind of where just looking at our history of um, our clothing, but we put a lot of pride into it. And that was actually one of the reasons why I decided to go to school was because I've been a seamstress for 20 years and I wanted to be able to provide quality clothing um, with the products that I was producing. So um, I think it's just keeping in line with who we are as Blackfoot people. Uh,